Oputa panel, when he was invited, he was never indicted. They never indicted him. They wanted to shut him up. They did everything possible to shut him up. But Major always speak the truth because he has so much secret of Nigeria. Thank you, Daddy, for joining us. Can you please say hello to your people from all over the world who have been waiting for you for the past one month? Who want to hear from you, please? Ah, we cannot hear me, Joe. Umar. Umar, we cannot hear me, Joe. We cannot hear him at all. We cannot hear him at all. We cannot hear him at all. Idris, can you hear us now? Now, yes, yes. Excellent. It's my pleasure hearing your voice, my brother, after a very long period. Yes. To our fellow brothers and sisters, fellow patriots across the world, uh, it is my pleasure meeting you. I thank you so much for this medium for us to be able to interact all for the interests of the future of our country and the future of our younger ones. It is my pleasure meeting you today. Truly delighted, truly happy. And I hope and believe we will get to talk within ourselves in understanding where we are. And let me say before I, uh, I give you back the initiative is to say that questions, no matter how nasty, no matter how bitter, no matter how unpalatable, please ask because probably from yesteryear's propaganda, that's the much you know. So be able to set things aright. Nothing to hide, plain, open. All for the interest of our country. My pleasure. Thank you so much, my general. I uh, will continue to call you a general because in your right, you deserve it. Um, my first question is, in your own words, who is Major Al Mustafa? Major Mustafa is a Nigerian. Uh, he believes he is a patriot. He has had his early education when he was at a very tender age, culminating to prison and then into politics through to this moment. Al Mustafa is a common Nigerian uh, who is willing to stand forth and defend and provide for Nigeria with total concern and protection for younger ones. The future is an area that we will not allow anybody to tamper with. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, our Major. Thank you. Uh, Major Al Mustafa, how would you describe the Nigeria general election of 2023? Well, I was a victim. I was a candidate of Action Alliance, and uh, we saw what happened. I deliberately refused to come to the fore along with the party to take the matter to court or to even lament it over what we saw. Uh, we were deliberately put to shame as a calculated game where in constituencies where we have active larger followership what people who have snapped exactly what they did in voting to us but you will see at the end of the day where you see a million or a hundred thousand or five hundred thousand you will see it being converted to either ten people or twenty as having voted to us so what we saw in that election is an arrangement where prior to the election in itself figures were allocated to parties of choice. That is treason in a society that knows itself and understand and respect the law. An environment that has an investment or true respect for democracy, that is treason. What we saw in 2023 was pure treason by those who either directed it, supported it, funded it, and then protected it. They are all responsible 
if it is if the law is to walk that was treason but i believe with that bitter experience and having come to the fore and having get to understand that investing in democracy is now mandatory for our country and our future and investing in democracy that should be seen to be docile or domesticated democracy to our history and our culture in future is also another mandatory step that patriots must gather together to do we should not be seen to be a copycat a country that is as great as we are a country with resource person persons given by god almighty that we can equate with ourselves with anybody else in the world should not be a copycat it's disheartening disturbing for us to say today we are a copycat of a certain democracy called presidential system we should have democracy domesticated to ourselves to our culture to our history in fact if there is any democracy we should copy other than our own culture is to look around in africa and to look at our values to look at our culture and to know that we africans we are already structured even when the entire west was moving naked in their phase of history called the barbaric era so mm. people are so carried away they don't look at things deeply but the moment mr abc says so they now stand to believe and take it and then bring it to the fore and enforce it on our people that is the service that is blind work blind investment has no value and no meaning it is a matter of time what the zeal and spirit and the awareness i'm seeing the younger ones coming up together i believe we are on the right direction we will copy no one whoever wish to copy us shall come to the fore we will now come up with our democracy that will be protective of our resources protective of our rights protective of our people protective of our god-given resources protective of our country and our continent you want to trade with us you should understand we are an independent sovereign country you want to trade with us let there be respect and when it becomes mutual we accept you but not nigeria to be seen to be moving with the cap in hand and then as a public card that has no direction no meaning other than what to, for, from one to few people come to them and say this is not good you should understand slavery is gold and africa has actually come of age and the time to be on our feet is now Thank you. Uh, if you are just joining us, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, you, you ask us to bring you, you want to hear from Major Al Mustafa directly. We've been doing the promotion of this interview for the past one month. Today, you have the opportunity to ask our Major anything you want to ask him. He's here live and direct with us, and he's here to answer our questions. Um, thank you, Dennis. Dennis, you are one of those people that wanted to watch this uh, live interview and live broadcast directly, you know, because you said you have a couple of questions that you would love to ask uh, Major Al Mustafa. Uh, Major, thank you for joining us. My next question is, you once ran for president of FRN. What would you have done if you were elected? <laughs> Well, so many things, and I think giving you an answer in a nutshell, uh, that is injustice to the question and to myself. And I'm sure you must watch in debates we have had with candidates, I hear what in a nutshell uh, what we are to do. But let me say in a nutshell, that we shall have a country that will have the compass of its political security economic journey adjusted yet no matter how painful no matter the risk there will be awareness of our own people so that they can understand where the true state of nigeria is Having, once that is established and there will be concurrent activities in nigeria on this passage we primarily and to whosoever came is to now look at your country from the point of view of the women in your country, old and young, wherever they are, 
and understand that the dignity of women must be your priority in the provisions uh, for you to take. And it should be seen to be captured in your laws. And then say the dignity of women are columns of hundreds of documents. So it's not, uh, it's not a joke. Second is the youth. Investing in the youth is mandatory from education right from the onset and then for them to have free but qualitative education is now a mandatory thing and then to guide and to mold your younger ones to be seen to know the patriotism knowledge and knowledge and knowledge in terms of utilizing it in understanding their country their continent and the whole world including the politics dirty and real genuine politics that governs the whole world meaning molding true leadership in the youth that tomorrow can face the challenges and manage it with ease the third is the management i talked about dignity of our women i talk about investing in the youth but i'm talking of elders now from 68 and above you manage them you care for them there are provisions of their welfare that should be seen to permeate and cover the entire lot of them across the country. Our laws have, has actually nothing to do with that. that is, it has not captured this. We intend to bring it and put it to practice for all to see. And then number four is actually bringing Nigeria back to the mainstream of our own values in competing with international countries around the world and then bringing Nigeria back to the mainstream from our security, economy, diplomacy, and international relevancy of Nigeria. In our leadership, this will come to the fore. But fundamentally here, at the end of the day, we will pay attention to the greatest issues in bringing Nigeria to be seen, to be acknowledged, to be respected from the point of view of Nigeria's position in Africa, the Committee of Nations in the world. Nigeria's security, Nigeria's economy, management of our resources, education, investment in our diplomacy, and then sitting down scientifically to now know where the world is and in identifying Nigeria's enemies who have programs in destroying Nigeria that we know of that started from 1972 and in understanding the direction of the new world order and how we can invest using our resources, human and material, in making Nigeria great. And then saying that all attempts by our past leaders to have this re-examine so that Nigeria can benefit from it, that was stopped by the West to us. This is what I The in leadership is what ought to have been sent to be right from independence to date. To us, that is the passage and there is no mixing words. The 200 plus million people in Nigeria is not a joke. We cannot allow anybody to toy with it and we cannot get that compromise. And that should be enshrined in the law and subsequent leadership will follow that. So Nigeria can get ourselves the same. But let me give a small example for you to understand what I mean. When Soviet Union was facing on the international scene, who have real Nigeria and retarded Nigeria and counted Nigeria as, uh, as a disabled country. Very cruel, very terribly inhuman. When Soviet Union was facing that, a particular country on earth that became the only most prudent and down deep to us to have sorted what happened. At the end of the day, Soviet Union collapsed and people wrote so many books to suit those who believe it was the pressure that made Soviet Union to have broken. It is a lie. The only legible student that saw what happened against Soviet Union, the only country that we are talking about here is China. And the study China gave in understanding how Soviet Union got broken to know that it was not the external pressure, but the internal weakness of Soviet Union. That is exactly what brought about Soviet Union collapsing. So those who believe their pressure from outside 
alongside their propaganda on numerous books they have written across the world, distorting history. They should understand that there are numerous students around the world, and Nigeria will not be indifferent. We will learn from the prudence, honesty, commitment, and patriotism of China that studied Soviet Union. So the weakness in Soviet Union internally from the structures that were protecting, governing, and managing her economy then, political strength, but the weakness in those who were managing the political strength internally also gave way. They were not prudent, the structures were not strong. And finally, what gave them weakness is something that the entire people, particularly the West, don't want to believe. They believe anything that is say spiritual beliefs, spiritual investment, spiritual spirit, and strong, deeply rooted in the belief of their country and the faith of their people and it's a major fundamental sense. The West believe in doing the same, but when it comes to deceiving people, they say to tell you that is unscientific. But actually these are the weaknesses that brought about the collapse of Soviet Union. Now China at that material time was even equated even along with us in Africa. They were nobody. They sat down, dusted up these weaknesses, and China began to build in it. They started with education, they started with enlightening the youth so that when tomorrow comes, they are already informed and aware so that they will become res very resilient and they will resist and there are openings for all. That's why in leadership, numerous countries today around the world, 80% are not very long work in leadership qualities, teaching in it, and it's in their nose. This long work is called courage. Courage meaning the capacity to carry all, to have an in all inclusive uh, arrangement in your laws, in your uh, democratic practices, and creating opportunities for all to utilize their form in managing a country. So, what that lesson with which China actually is exhibiting her greatness today is what we believe we have already captured and we are keeping it secret. This country will be back on our feet, irrespective of our enemies at home and abroad. There are opponents who are in high places in Nigeria, who are in the club of billionaires and trillionaires. But they know, we know very well, and they are good from the enemies of Nigeria who are using games in retarded Nigeria. Remember, if China had behaved like those cronies and agents in Nigeria, who are afraid of those who insist on crippling us. China by now would have been worse than Nigeria. So today, this lesson we have found in Delhi. That's why we are not sharing the contact with no one. What I told you is just a sufficient issue and to tell you our resolve and belief as patriots. And I believe you and those listening to us will understand that we will be scientific, we will be patriotic, we will be committed, and know that we can hold our shoulder to shoulder and make sure we unplug, we utilize power, we change the direction and the course of Nigeria for the good of all, for the good of those alive today and our future. Thank you. Thank you, Dari. Thank you, Major Al Mustafa. Uh, Preeti, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you have one question, pretty, to ask Major Al Mustafa. Please go ahead, please. Okay, um, I don't know. Is it uh, possible for Major Al Mustafa to uh, collaborate with um, um, uh, Mr. Peter Obi for uh, I don't know in the next election? Is it possible? He's he's listening to you. He will listen to you. He will, he will answer you now. Thank you. All right. I don't know. Can I, Major, have, can I, do I have a, okay, do I have an option for another question or is just one question? One more. Go ahead. One more. Okay. Okay. This one is directly to you. I don't know if it's possible for you to, um, because uh, this is this is like a very powerful weapon in Nigeria now. Youths are very uh, influenced by uh, the music industry, you know. 
and uh, our uh, celebrity celebrities. So I don't know if there is a way you, uh, our legendary uh, Jesus Abu Karim, can look for a way to look for a platform and you can gather some of these our celebrities and our musicians for them to bring out this type of message that this is your last song, for them to create things like this. This will create a very wide awareness. We should lift the tribalism and all other things. I think it should be a very a very big, uh, um, such a very big uh, something for us to move forward in the okay. country. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I will answer that so that um, Major al Mustafa will um, go ahead and answer your question. Uh, first of all, most uh, Nigerian artists that you know in this present day are not conscious musicians. A lot of them don't know their history. A lot of them are not interested in politics because they are making money from the work that people like us have done for the revolution that people are cause have fought for to make the music industry to be what it is today. Um, they are busy uh, misleading the youth. Uh, they are busy misleading the youth in things that are not important. For example, you see songs that they sing. You see songs that uh, that are so 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 waywardness that you will be shocked that problem there's problem in Nigeria, but these guys are not using their medium to talk about the problem in Nigeria. However, they've forgotten that it is Nigerians who made them who they are. Who they are. Because with our millions of population, we can use it to invest and do great businesses and people will be fine. But these guys are misleading our youth and our government is taking advantage of that in order for us in order for the youth not to know their history and in order for the youth not to ask questions so i will let major al mustafa to answer your question and don't also forget that i have tried every possible best to reach out to a lot of them but a lot of them are scared they are scared of death. And I've told you, fear is stagnant. When you are scared of something, you will never, never progress. Being, being scared of something will put you some that same place for the rest of your life and you will still die. I remember when I was in university in Kano, my lecturer used to tell me that uh, risk is the best way to live life. Whatever you do in your life, you have to take positive risk. Risk that will change the, uh, that will change economy, that will change good to good governance, risks that will make you successful, risks that will remove you from poverty and all that. So I hope that I've been able to answer your question. So let me give the uh, line to uh, Major Al Mustafa, person that I call General Al Mustafa, to answer the question you're asking. Daddy, please go ahead. Thank you so much for the question. Collaborating in politics or collaboration in politics, particularly at the presidential level or party levels, that is open. That's why democracy has a what you would call flexibility. If we are compatible in our thinking, in our approach to government, in zero understanding and then providing solutions to it, uh, democracy, I mean, on corruption, that is destroying Nigeria. If we are here, that we will not be manipulated by those who created the documents of 1972 from outside. If we are not going to be manipulated within Nigeria of people who are enemies of the same society, enemies of the poor, enemies of the rich, I mean enemies of the poor people and the younger ones tomorrow, but people who believe they are pocket and nothing else are the people that will now be seen to be telling guiding what we do. I don't think we'll be compatible. I am open, we are flexible, we are simple. After all, take note, when you see my brother Peter Avi, tell him who Mustafa is to him. We are brothers, he will tell you, and I want to know from you, make sure the uncle man here of the program, it is Sabil Karim tells you, wherever we meet, we meet as brothers. We ha I have known him for a very long time. I know who he is, and he knows who I am. But we are looking at Nigeria from the perspective of patriotism, true and true, and nothing else. So if he is ready, if they are ready, we are here. After all, all we are asking for is the expansion of the Assembly of Patriots as a major solution in uniting Nigeria 
in moving Nigeria to the new phase of science and realism in making Nigeria be. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you so much. Uh, we have Ariwa Politics in the house, and I know you would want to ask you a question. His name is Usman. Usman, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Iris, I can, I can hear you. Please, Usman, go ahead and ask our major your question. Uh, first of all, before I said anything, I would like to welcome the major. And if you could remember, I have never met a major anywhere, but uh, I always talk about him, even in this your platform. Uh, I am following.